Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jack Lemmon. I had a terrible thought about 10 minutes ago. George told me the other day, I asked him how many films they had chosen clips from. And George said uh, he thought it was 24. I thought about it, I've done 44 films. If George had used the other 20, I could be up here speaking to no one. In thinking back over my career to date, one thing struck me that I hadn't thought about for years, and that is the remarkable coincidence of things that happened that had absolutely nothing to do with me, my ability, or lack of it, or anything else. They just happened. Crazy, wild things. But if they had not happened, I might not have had a career. From the time I was eight or nine years old, all I had wanted to be was an actor. And I acted in school plays, I acted at the drop of a hat, I'd act between classes, I'd go 20 minutes on hello. I figured I was destined to save the American theater. There was no question about that. And a few years later, I got out of college, went down to New York. For some reason, they would not let me do that. I don't know why. But something was going on that I had no idea about, never thought about, and that was live TV. And oh God, that was glorious. I had absolutely no interest in film. I figured that if something wasn't live, that it wasn't really acting, you see. It was not that I was naive. I was dumb, is what it was. But when that offer came to test for the picture with Judy, that, at least I was smart enough to realize, was a horse of a different color, because it was Garson Kane in writing, Judy Holliday was going to star, and George Cukor, a great actor's director, directing. So I said, oh, well, now, hey, wait a minute. I went ahead, did my film. All I knew was that John Ford was going to do Mr. Roberts next. That's all I knew. And like every other young actor in the country, I would have given my left, I would have given my eye teeth <laughs> to play Pulver, you know, one of the great parts. Anyhow, I finished the film. One day, uh, I walked onto his set to see what was going on with The Long Gray Line. They were just wrapping it up. Now, I walk on the set. And uh, I'm looking, they're lighting, and I don't see any of the actors yet, and they're looking, and I'm just waiting around and so forth. And one of the old grips with a pair of sneakers and baggy pants and a baseball cap and an eye patch, he was sucking on a handkerchief or something. And he kept looking at me, and he came over, and he's, and he's just standing right beside me, staring at me. And finally, I said, hi, what you? You know, and so forth. I figured he was a grip from the other picture or something. And he says, uh, are you... Yeah, are you that kid, uh, uh, the lemon that did the thing with Judy? I, I said, yeah. Uh, they tell me you want to play Pulver. I said, well, yeah, how did you? He says, you ought to play Pulver. And I said, well, from your lips to God's ear, I uh, you don't know. And he says, spit in your hand. I said, what do you, uh, what? spit in your hand. I said, why? He says, it's an old custom. Play. And he spit in his hand, he stuck it out. I spit in my hand, and I stuck it out. He says, I'm Ford, you're Pulver. And he walked away. Now. That wasn't talent. What I'm getting at is the extraordinary good fortune that some of us get and some of us don't. But there is something that I hope all actors will remember during the dark days, which are most of them. There's another side of that coin that makes it very, very worthwhile, I think. If once, twice in your life, an actor can get a part with some kind of depth, he can go beyond entertaining, and he can touch people, and he can move them, and he can make them think, and he can thereby enlighten them. And I think that is one precious gift that is given to very, very few mortals, even once in their life. It is a noble profession, and I am damn proud to be part of it. 
I made a solemn vow that I would not single out the members of my family and say what I thought about them and what they mean to me. But I will tell you something that is 100% God's honest truth. As much as I love acting and, and as grateful as I am for my career, which is so vitally important to me, if the whole thing ended tomorrow and there were no more parts, I would be very upset is what the hell I'd be, <laughs> not that I think about it. If it did end tomorrow, I honestly feel that I have something that is much, much more important, and that is my family. They have given my life a wonderful purpose and a fulfillment. They have brought me joy and happiness, and they have taught me that love is the most important thing in the world. I loved and respected my father very much, and he gave me an awful lot of very good advice. Maybe the best thing that he ever said to me was the last thing before he passed away. He took my hand and he smiled and he said, spread a little sunshine. And I am damn well going to keep on trying to do that as long as they'll let me. And to, to paraphrase Pulver, thank you. This stuff was terrific. Thank you.